Well, hello everyone and welcome back to Lisa's Coloring Corner. I had a few requests to again show how I frame, <laughs> if you want to call it that, a diamond painting and put it in a scrapbook. Um, I love doing this. It's just a neat, handy way to um, finish your diamond paintings. Now this is a 12 by 12 scrapbook that I got either, I can't remember now, Michaels or Hobby Lobby. And the 30 by 30 diamond paintings fit perfectly in these. This is not my idea. Um, Anne from A Colorful Life is the one that showed um, this to me um, on her channel and I thought oh what a neat idea so I stole the idea from her <laughs> so let's put this aside now I got out my cutting mat um, I have two size cutting mats a smaller one which I could not find and that's the size I probably would have needed for this but I have this great big one so I got this one out and we will just use this and the reason I got out my cutting mat there's two ways um, you can cut out this border that is the first thing you're going to want to do you don't want to keep the border on or it won't fit plus you don't want to see you know the stuff around the edge um, depends upon my mood how I go about cutting the edge off. Sometimes I just take my scissors. This is a Tim Holtz scissors and I love this thing. Um, I only use this scissors and I got some stuff on it from when I cut before. Canvas pieces. Um, I only use them on my diamond painting canvases or when I am framing larger diamond paintings. I make my own uh, canvas stretched canvases so I have a big bolt of a canvas and then I buy stretcher bars and I make my own stretched canvases um, so I only use this particular scissors on both of those items I love them and I will link them below down in the description so you can either use a scissors I did recently purchase this rotary cutter I had a larger one a Fisker's one and it fell apart on me. <laughs> um, so I purchased this smaller one. I thought maybe this would be easier. Um, so you just push this button back and it exposes the blade. And I love the colors, of course. <laughs> and uh, I'll link this down below too. I got both these items off of Amazon. So I'll show you how. I mean, it's pretty self explanatory, right? I just cut along right next to the drills so there is no white from the outside showing. Now this is one of the reasons it's kind of important to get your outside drills as even as possible. Whether the inside ones are perfect, nah, not that critical. I know some people get perfectionist you know getting their drills perfectly even and I try that too but you know when you look at this from farther away it is not going to be that important my drills on here are not perfect and again from farther away you cannot tell so that's how you would use the scissors now I have not used this I just took it out of the package um and I have not used rotary cutter, cutter to do this in a long time. Maybe it would work better to come from the top down. Let's see. So we'll just cut it down. We're not quite cutting all the way through. It's a little bit easier though using the rotary tool to go right up against the drills than the scissors. So that's why I kind of like using this. You just kind of place the blade. Sure, as I say that, now I'm having problems. I think I'm trying to get too close and that's why I'm hitting the drills. Okay. 
away. Normally don't have this amount of problems. So I guess we'll cut the other sides rather than me struggling on camera. You can also use a ruler um, and that would probably work better. I typically didn't. Like I said, I never had this amount of problems. Naturally, on camera, I do. So I had a drill come off here. We're going to put that one back on. Which I have to do by hand. <laughs> there we go. Let's see if we can get that little bit of white off yet. Yes, I'm picky. It's not going to show up that much once you get it framed anyhow. So let's just quickly cut off these other two sides. And when I'm editing this, I may just speed this up. All right, so we have the edges cut off. I had much more success <laughs> with the scissors than the rotary cutter. Again, works better if you have like a, a ruler next and you can just go along. <laughs> All right, so we have it cut out. The next big decision is what color cardstock do we want to mount this on because that's what you will do is you get some scrapbook paper. Scrapbook paper typically comes in 12 by 12 size. So I bought a bunch of um, scrapbook paper in the past. I tore them all out of the pads took the glue off the top, and I arranged them by color. I have a uh, big wooden uh, cube that I bought from Michael's when it was 50% off, and it has these shelves in, and it's heavier than Dickens because it's solid wood. Um, but then I split out the paper in color groups. So this top batch, I have yellows, oranges, reds, and pinks. Forgot the pinks. <laughs> oh no, the pinks don't go in here. Yellow, oranges, and reds. They kind of got smushed together over here. Then pinks and purples is in the next shelf. And I didn't bring down the others because I knew I was going to want to go with one of these family of colors. But then I have blues up there, greens, and then earth tones and blacks. Now I have a whole bunch of paper pads here to rip all the colors out of because these packs were on clearance. This was months ago at Joanne Fabrics. They were, these are glitter, they were normally 20 bucks, and I got them for $4.99. So, yeah, I bought a whole crap load of packs of cardstock in every shade imaginable. <laughs> but, like I said, I haven't tore these out yet, so we're going to use one of the colors that I have out. Now, because this is a rainbow uh, diamond painting, boy, any, any color is going to go with this. There's, you know, I could go with blue. But one of my framed ones in here already has a blue background. I'm going to hit my iPad here. Um, so I didn't want to go with blue. So this is one that I have framed. And you can see how nicely it fits in here. And by putting it on the cardstock, it looks like it has a frame around. I did not get around to framing very many. I have a number of 30 by 30s up there that need framing. But then I picked orange for this one. Now, I did show this one in a video. So I do have one other video out there that showed how I did this. If I remember, I will link that video down below also. But I decided to go with orange because I wanted to bring out the orange in her wings. Okay, so 
Again, I didn't want to go with blue. Again, I'm not going to go with orange. I want to go with something different. So, we could go with a yellow or a red or a pink or a purple. All depends what color do you want to bring out in the picture. If you didn't have a blue one already, there's quite a bit of blues and purples in here. That would be kind of pretty. Um, I'm going to go for either pink or purple. Now this is kind of bright. That's too dark. It's the only two pinks I have. Wow. Okay, let's go for a purple. So I'm going to set this over here, get my scissors and everything out of the way. Let's look at these colors. Well, that's more of a red. That's probably in the wrong section. Let's put that over on the red pile. Here's kind of a blue lavender. Oh, that would be pretty. This is more of a pinky purple. And we have a real light color. Oh, this might be pretty. So yeah, th this is your decision. And when I frame on my stretched canvases, when I look at all my acrylic paints, yeah, this is the biggest decision. And that's kind of dark. We have a darker border around the outside, so I don't think I want to go too dark. I think I'm going to go with this. So, we're going to take this one out. Let's see if I got two or one, two. Okay, take that out of there. So, this is a real good uh, excuse to buy a bunch of real pretty paper. <laughs> All right, we'll leave that red up there. Because, yeah, I'm going to put this one with the reds also. Okay, let's put this scrapbook paper on the side. And I will get that back up on the shelves up there. All right, get our other stuff out of the way. Now the next thing we have to do is we have to glue our diamond painting to our canvas. And this is a smaller size. Oh, I know why. <laughs> Most of the 30 by 30s you get. <laughs> I didn't notice that about this one. Mm. Um, the 30 by 30 size actually is the entire canvas. So when you cut the border off, it's actually going to be about a 25 by 25. This one was true to size. So this one is actually a 30 by 30. So it probably was a 35 by 35. Oh, shoot. Wouldn't you know it? Hmm. I'm going to pause and see what other 30 by 30 completed diamond paintings I have up there. One moment. All right. <laughs> I told you I had a few to do. Um, I do have a couple that I looked at, but the actual size of these are 30 by 30s. So you don't have to do the extra step of putting them on... Um, the scrapbook paper. You would just cut them out and you can put them right into the scrapbook. Okay, so we're not going to do one of those. I want to do the extra step with you. So I do have four of them that are 30 by 30 actual canvas size. So they are kind of like 20 by 20s or 25 by 25 sort of. So I have this really pretty mandala. I have a couple mandalas in here. This is, that was a partial special drill. This was a full round, which I think turned out so pretty. This one, I absolutely love. This is my favorite. <laughs> is that not gorgeous? Unfortunately, I don't remember where I got these from, so don't ask, please. This is before I started writing the company names down on the uh, packages that they come in. Yeah, and then I did this one. So, I would love to frame this one right now, but I think we're going to do this one because I can use the same color cardstock that I have out, and I'm going to bring out the purples in here. But a pretty a pink would be really pretty too, 
or an aqua. Any of those colors would work really good. I think uh, blue, either the pale blue or this bright royal blue would be pretty. This one, yeah, you could pick just about any color, depending, again, what color would you like to bring out in that diamond painting. This one, yeah, maybe a, well, there's a lot of red in it, so maybe you'd want to bring out this pale pink, or maybe the, you know, the green, or what have you. Maybe even a white, who knows. All right, so let's get on with it. So again, first thing you got to do is cut it out. So I am going to, again, fast forward through this process and uh, we'll come back when I am done with it. All right, well, there we go. So now, because it has different colors on different sides, it's up to you which way you want to frame it. I think I like it this way. Okay, so now <laughs> if we put our scrapbook paper behind, you can see how nice that's going to look. Now, a lot of times I'm very perfectionistic so I'll kind of measure around um, sometimes depends upon <laughs> if I'm in a hurry or not um, a lot of times I'll just eyeball it so like right there looks pretty good looks like it's pretty even on all the sides so next thing you have to do is put some glue on the back um, one of them that I like to use this is Eileen's uh, this is the original tacky glue, um, and you can get this at your craft stores. Um, I get mine on Amazon, so I'll link this down below too. Um, but pretty much any glue. You could use your your Elmer's um, if you wanted, but I am going to use this because it is nice and sticky. Now, when you start... A new container you cut the tip off I try to cut it down a little bit because I'm not doing a small craft I'm do I want it for a larger area so I do cut this down um, farther so it comes out faster and you don't have to put a ton on because it's not going to be handled or anything um, I don't worry about the corners at this point. There's a number of tools you can use to spread this out. We have brushes. Mod Podge has a number of brushes. I have not gotten these out yet, but there's three different sizes of those. You can use just a, a cheap sponge brush, or I have a, uh, what is this called? Eh... Uh, can't think of it. I like to use these, and these come in different sizes also. But the Mod Podge brushes work really good too. Cheapest option there is, is an old credit card. <laughs> Works really good to spread glue out also. Like I said, I don't put as much on here, and I'm not as particular about this when I am only putting... Uh, my diamond painting in a scrapbook versus when I am putting it on stretched canvas because that is going to be hanging on a wall. All right, let's push this over and let's get it centered again. Now, because this dries clear, if you get some outside the diamond painting, it doesn't really matter. Um, at this point, what I'll do is I will put a little bit in each corner to make sure it's going to lay down flat. Again, if some oozes out, it's not going to matter, but I try to avoid that. 
just to make sure it's stuck down good. And I'm running out. Come on. I'll have to squeeze harder, I guess. There we go. Don't, like I said, have to be real particular about this. It's going to be in a sheet protector. So, yeah, not, not that big of a deal. All right, we have it glued down. Now, you'll find, because we have quite a bit of glue in a large area and we're putting it on paper, just like watercolor, if you use watercolor in a coloring book, it may buckle a little bit. That doesn't bother me that much, and it's going in a scrapbook, so, hey. All right, let's get our scrapbook out. Here is the final process. Now, because I don't have many framed yet, um, I'm putting everything in one. I do have a couple of um, additional scrapbooks. I would like to get one that has, like, a Christmas scene on front, something like that for the holidays. There are some, but they have like a cutout in the middle, and I, I don't want that. But what I eventually want to do is split these out into different scrapbooks. I want to have one for holidays, because I have a lot of Christmas ones, Halloween ones, you know, something like that. And I have a lot of special drill mandalas, um, or, you know, regular mandalas. And I thought that would be another thing to put in its own scrapbook. I do. I did purchase some extra sheet protectors. Um, these 12 by 12s. So we are going to just slide it in here again, whichever way you want it to appear, and look in your or your scrapbook. There you go. So now we have another one framed. Like I said, I need to frame a few others. <laughs> and those that are true 30 by 30s, you know, like this one actually, we could put in. When you don't have too many, you could actually only put them on one side and not front to back. I know some people don't put them front to back. I am because I know eventually I'm going to get quite a few in here. But like I said, the true 30 by 30s will go in there just like that. So we actually got two framed. Yay! <laughs> Go me! Um, so I have a few sheets left in here to do and then yeah I'm going to open this up and I'm going to add a few. I did buy um, because there's only so much that fits on the size pins in here. I bought the extender pins, the longer pins um, you can you can purchase so that you can fit more of the sheet protectors in here. So I do have a set of those. Um, but right now, you know, I, I have a few that will fit in here yet. So yeah. So eventually when you get your scrapbook full, it's a really neat like coffee table item, right? Have your family and friends look through your scrapbook and you can get them addicted to diamond painting too. <laughs> Ah, so there you go. Hope this helped. Um, those of you that were asking, how do I frame my diamond paintings? How do I put them in the scrapbook? Now, I do have um, a couple 30 by 40s that I have completed. Um, and I'm going to do a video on that also. I have not put one I have not framed it yet. Um, it's going to be a little bit different than having some standard size papers and standard size scrapbooks. I mean, these are all really pretty. You can get so many different kinds um, and colors and designs and whatnot. A uh, little bit more limited when you do the uh, 30 by 40s. But yeah, I hope to uh, complete that video, eh, hopefully, shortly, <laughs> who knows. Um, 
as many things as I can, I will link down below. These, yes, I just bought at Michael's or Hobby Lobby. Um, and again, you can get all of this stuff at a craft store. I bought all mine on Amazon. So what I can find, what I can link, I will link down below in the description. Scrapbooks, you know, there's a gazillion of them out there <laughs> on Amazon, craft stores, you know, wherever. Um, not sure if all this stuff is available in other countries or not, but yeah, what I can find, I will link down below in the description. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it helped those of you who are wondering what to do with your smaller snack size diamond paintings. If you enjoyed this, please hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe if you're new to my channel. I hope everybody's having a fantastic day. And as always, happy coloring and happy diamond painting. Bye, guys.